Hey, Nico from VoiceFlow here. In this video, I will talk about this uh, simple integration to allow you um, basically to import Zendesk article to your knowledge base. Not only this, but basically uh, scrubbing all those articles from your sitemap and uh, as well as convert the content from HTML to a more readable um, text format, then injecting this file to your knowledge base. Uh, ultimately, you can also set uh, a cron job to do this daily, weekly. Um, you, you can choose for this. And, um, and uh, yeah, so let's, let's dive in. Uh, I've made a, a readme available on the, uh, on the repo. So you should have all the, um, um, all the info to set up everything. Keep in mind that this sample code um, is meant to work in two ways. One is using the interactive prompt, so mostly to do a, um, to manually trigger the upload. And another one is to use endpoint. So you can run this app uh, as a background service, and then you can um, choose to do the upload or um, set a cron job for that. Um, regarding the settings, so we have a .env.template with all the default settings. Um, the one you want to look after are the uh, sitemap URL. Uh, this is the, our sitemap URL, but uh, obviously you want to change that to yours. If you don't set anything, we will use the subdomain to try to generate your sitemap. Uh, Zendesk subdomain, this is mandatory. Uh, this is how Zendesk works. Uh, this is what you need for the uh, Zendesk API to work as well. Uh, and we are using the Zendesk API to fetch the article content. Because otherwise, um, you can't, for example, you can't pass a URL in the knowledge base, um, like a Zendesk article e URL, uh, because it will not work. So there are some limitation and some security here. Uh, Zendesk do not allow you to, to do this. So this is why we are using Zendesk API. And uh, you will also need your Zendesk API key. Check the documentation to see how you can get access to this. Uh, max failure is just in case of uh, if any of those two keys, the voice flow knowledge base or the Zendesk API key or any other errors appear during the, uh, the process. Uh, obviously, we don't want to keep looping for all the available URLs in your sitemap. So after three fails, we will stop uh, the process. Uh, keep docs, um, as I was explaining, we are actually getting the content for each article, cleaning this, convert the HTML to a text, and then saving that file before uploading it to the knowledge base. And if you set that to false, as soon as the document has been uploaded to the knowledge base, we will delete that file. If you want to keep all the files, you can set that to three. Um, Satmap filter, this is uh, what you want to fetch or to filter from your Satmap. So we will see a bit later, but to let you know, this is how it looks, uh, how the Satmap looks. So we have this uh, or those URLs and a last mod that we will use to also filter um, what article should be updated or not. And as you can see here, we have this article uh, in the past. So this is the what, what we want. But for example, we don't want the sections or the category because this will just add noise to our knowledge base. So the filter will allow you to only use URLs with the article in the, the article's word in, in the path. So let's go back here. Uh, what else? Always force by default to false, meaning that uh, we will not fetch all the URL, but only those with uh, last mode value that is within the, uh, the, the period we've set. So here, for example, previous days, seven. So basically, you can say, OK, only fetch all the uh, modified article from 
the last seven days. And I think that's, that's it regarding the app itself. It's all in one file, not maybe not the best practice here, but, um, yeah, we have different type of users with different, uh, technical background. And I think having everything in one file might be easier for, um, user that's uh, are a bit new to uh, code. So, uh, what we've got here, we have three endpoints. So this is when we are using this node app as a background service. The health is just to check if everything is okay. Uh, let's say you, you use this uh, you can monitor this just to be sure that, um, your cron job is still running. For example, we have this, uh, Cron, cron endpoint, and this is, we will see that a bit later, but this is how you can set a cron job. Zendesk uh, endpoints, this is where you just uh, run the uh, upload automation. And all this use different uh, functions like the parse uh, sitemap. Uh, I will not go too deep into this. I've commented um, where, where it was needed. So you can, you can read the code, pretty, uh, pretty easy to read. But what you want to know is the main process. Again, we are getting, uh, we are porting the sitemap. From this, we will filter the URL we want based on are you forcing the update? What's the period uh, we want to uh, to get the um, the article from based on the last modification date, uh, and that will include the filter you've set in your .m file. So in that case, articles. Um, when we've done this, we will fetch the Zendesk article. And for this, we will use the um, Zendesk API. So um, yeah, this is, um, yeah, basically, this is still the, um, the uh, sitemap process here, uh, parsing. And then we go right there. Uh, if we don't have anything, we will return no URLs. If we had something, we will start doing uh, the process, which is so for each URL in the sitemap, again, each filtered URL, uh, we will basically do a parse Zendesk article. And yeah, up to the, uh, the end of, of the, the loop or the list. If I go to this function, um, so as you can see, this function will parse the Zendesk article, convert that from uh, raw HTML to text, save the text file and add this uh, to the uh, KD upload queue. So what we want to do here to, to be able to fetch an article with the Zendesk API, which is this one, that's also why we need the Zendesk subdomain here, uh, we need a number, so an ID. And this ID is right there in the sitemap. So what we want to be able to do is for each URL, extract the ID so we can then fetch the article, the corresponding article. Um, okay, so uh, let's do this, and then uh, so the, basically, yeah, sorry, uh, this is what the regex do here: just uh, extract the uh, the ID, uh, and then if we have a match, we we just uh, get the number from that. And what this will return is a JSON, and uh, with a bunch of uh, item in there, but we want to focus on the title and the body. So we grab that from the response. And now we are using um, a library, or, which is uh, here convert. Actually, uh, this is this one, HTML to text, which works pretty fine. Uh, so that's why I'm using this one. Um, and we will convert the title and the body. We want to be sure that the body is, uh, the body length is more than five. You can tweak that. Uh, but we don't basically, we don't want to create uh, a source if there's nothing in there. And then we just check if our uh, doc um, directory exists. Uh, that's the case here. I already run this, so we, we have that document uh, directory. Uh, otherwise, we will create one and then we write or we create the text file and we add this to our queue. And the queue will run this the post request, and then we will basically use the uh, KD um, upload uh, API. And then 
that's I think that's that's it. We upload we upload this and uh, oh yeah, um, if if we choose to keep the file, we'll uh, ignore that part. Otherwise, we will just delete the file. Uh, the last part here is the uh, interactive prompt. So in that prompt, the user will be able to run this upload KB uh, um, manually instead of using the, uh, the endpoint. So let's start with the uh, interactive prompt, npm start. So I can exit, I can update the KB. So if I choose to do this, let me just switch here. So this is my project. Uh, I don't have any uh, source in there. Um, so what I will do is choose to update. I will use my default voice flow KB API key. So that's the one I've set in my .env. My site map URL, same thing here. I will use my default one so I can hit enter, not typing anything. Force update, no, I don't want that. Default is no, so good to hit enter as well. Enter previous day value, that's seven by default, but I will just do one for this demo and hit enter. Processing article, we have four articles that need to be updated. As you can see, we create the files and then, um, so I've set in my .env not to remove this because I want to show you the result. And uh, yeah, so all, all good, all done. Uh, just for you to know, let me share what, um, what uh, the um, Zendesk API return in terms of content for the article. There we go. So let's uh, do a console console log for the uh, uh, the body here. It's mainly to show you the difference between uh, what we get and what we send to the to the um, uh, to the knowledge base. And just one. So this is the kind of um, data we got. As you can see, this is a bit noisy. We have a bunch of uh, HTML tags in there. Might not be the best uh, stuff to uh, inject in your knowledge base. So instead, we will return those kind of documents, the title at the top, and then we have a clean version of all this. And if I go right there and refresh this, you can see that now I have all those documents. So that's uh, the four, four documents here. And uh, yeah, I can, uh, what are domains, project introduction, introduction to variables. Yeah, so uh, if I uh, tell me more about variables, we should, it's the uh, corresponding article can be, yeah, okay. We have a, a link here. And if I check the source, that's the correct one. So that's one way to populate your uh, knowledge base. So let's actually remove what we've done here. We don't need that anymore. And uh, this time we will use the um, the background service version of this. So I'm using uh, PM2 to do that. And uh, so you again, you have the documentation um, in the readme, but basically if you do it, npm run prod, we will run this in the background. And if I go to here and I, um, I can then access my uh, endpoints. So this will basically do the same thing, uh, but using the endpoint. So I can set a URL, I can set an API key. So let's say I want to populate another knowledge base. I can use another uh, or dedicated knowledge base uh, API key here. I can choose to force this one or change the previous day. So for example, here, let's do four. And uh, yeah, let's see. So we have four here. Uh, let's go here and run this. We want to log that. So pm to log processing, processing. So yeah, um, we should, yeah, we can see that we are adding some article in there. Uh, obviously, you can uh, you, so you can add your own logic to let's for example get a, a status endpoint. Right now, we are just returning a pending um, information, but uh, or yeah, depending on uh, how you want to do this, um, 
most likely you don't want to run this forever, it can be a good way to just get a, a status if you uh, are going to upload a lot of uh, URLs. So it's done. Let's see right there. Let's uh, refresh this. And yeah, here we go. A few seconds ago, we have those new documents. Uh, the thing is, um, what are token, yeah, uh, as you can see, we don't have a uh, duplicate here simply because the we are using in the uh, knowledge space uh, request. So in the upload, uh, we use the overwrite and we set that to true. So basically we will just replace any existing uh, document. And uh, that's how you can do the uh, upload using the uh, endpoint. And what you can also do so let's say I have this running in the background. Here, I'm actually just monitoring this, logging this. But here, I, I'm still on my uh, command line, but I'm not anymore in the app. That's the app itself. Uh, it's still running, as you can see, it's still running in the background. So I still have access to this. So if I run the crawl here, this is uh, the expression you want to set. So in that case, again, this is a documented in the readme, but this is basically uh, to do this every minute, previous day. And uh, do we want to run this um, before eating the uh, schedule time? So for example, here, if I set something to be run every day at uh, 6 p.m. and I'm launching this at 2 p.m., maybe, uh, maybe I want to first run it and then wait for the uh, 6 p.m. job or th that's that that time. So the run will force this. I uh, will, yeah, let's, let's do this right now. And uh, again, let's just log that. So as you can see, we've just set a cron. And uh, because we've set the run to through, we are actually fetching the article. So it's done. And now we are running the actually scheduled job every minute. So here we again enter this uh, this logic of fetching the article. And we have to wait a bit more for the next one, like one more minute to get, um, yeah, get this running. So in your case, uh, obviously you don't want to set that to every minute, um, depending on how, how often you update your a document or article on Vendesk, you might want to set that to a daily or um, maybe a, a weekly schedule. But again, it's up to you. You can use the expression you want here. And uh, yeah, this will run uh, forever unless, as you can see, we've got a new one. So yeah, again, this one is set for every minute. So this, the, the Chrome job will run forever unless you uh, choose to kill the, uh, the service. So here, still running. If I want to stop that, I can uh, I can choose to do so. PM do, um, and uh, yeah, we need to. Um, oh, you can use the ID actually, and now it's stopped. So we will not have any more um, upload to the KB unless we start that again. If that makes sense. Um, okay, that's that's all. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can uh, yeah participate and, and fork this. Add some. Uh, uh, submit some PR if you want to, and uh, yeah. Um, again, this is a this is a, a simple code to give you the logic on how you can uh, you can achieve this using not only the uh, uh, the KV API, but in that case the Zendesk API as well. But you can translate this to any other kind of stuff if you want to deal with uh, README documentation, for example. Uh, this is our case. Uh, you can uh, use as well the readme API instead or yeah, up to you. That's all for me. And um, yeah, that's all.